All right, hello everyone. Um, my name is Cody Pounders. Uh, that's my beautiful wife, and uh, I now have a three-year-old son. That's a long time ago, but um, I'm from Mississippi. I've actually been an occupational therapist now for six years, um, mainly practicing in hand therapy world, uh, which I love. And I've also been a uh, CHT for about two and a half years now. And uh, I decided to to uh, do this course under Robin because of the, I just think it just makes the most sense of it. All the treatment techniques I've tried with very stiff hands um, and not really getting the results I wanted. So I explored and actually talked to Judy Colditz at a hand conference one time and uh, up in, uh, let's see, Washington DC is where I was talked to her. And she said, reach out to Robin and see if, we, if, we've, if I could take a course under her. And so I did, and I'm really glad I did because these results that I'm about to show you in just two weeks, um, I was unable to do like the full treatment on this patient because of a unexpected outcome or unexpected event that happened uh, within two weeks. So, um, but I think the results here that I'll show you is actually very, very good. Um, gained a lot of motion in a short amount of time that I wouldn't be able to gain in, with traditional methods. So, um, this patient that I saw was actually a result of a distal radius fracture. She fell slipping, um, but she went to an outside clinic away from me in another city, uh, treated by a therapist. And on day one, the therapist was not very, uh, I guess, experienced with this diagnosis, even though we as hand therapists see this a lot. Um, it was a volar plate ORF to her wrist. Um, but something happened. I think it was poor communication between the therapist and the patient. And I think the therapist wanted her to go back to see her, her surgeon because of that, or because of the uh, presentation that she showed that day in, in therapy. But anyway, so she actually did not go immediately to see the hand surgeon. She waited and um, at her next follow-up appointment, which I think was about a month after the first visit. So you can imagine with no therapy that whole time, um, no direction that was given to her. She was very stiff, very swollen, very guarded. Um, and this was actually a dominant hand. So um, this is uh, day one when I saw her out in the weight room. I, you know, I kind of expected what I was going to see just hearing from the hand surgeon. But um, she was kind of holding her hand in the guarded posture the whole time, was very afraid to move anything. Um, so a lot of rapport was being built during the first visit. So. Um, Main thing I noticed was a lot of wrist stiffness um, that, you know, obviously this far out, you don't want that much wrist stiffness with this. You actually want to get that going as quick as possible. But with this patient, um, I was really concerned about that. So initially, let me show you this video of how stiff her fist was. That was her best fist she's trying to make on day one. But I initially began to try to get back some wrist extension that's needed for the forearm-based cast because day one, I was already thinking of the Sims technique for this patient of mine. Um, so I decided to start with the wrist motion, just some traditional stuff for the wrist, but also at the, at the same time, create a, uh, a, a, a hand-based cast to hold the MPs and the extension to get those IPs firing more, the flexor tendons firing more, to hopefully gain a little bit more motion as we're focusing on the wrist a little bit more. Let me show you the video here. And this is just two weeks within a hand-based cast. You can tell she's actually gained a good bit of uh, IP motion during this time. All right, so this is, uh, this is a picture I took right before we started the forearm-based casting. Um, so that was her best fist at that time. A volar view there. And this began on July 7th of this year, the forearm-based cast. And so I instructed her, as Robin wants us to, to kind of perform this as you're looking at it, but also very frequently. Um, she actually had a sedentary job, so she was very, um, 
I say sedentary, but she was very needed on the computer at her job. So she did a lot of computer work, a lot of mouse work, a lot of typing. So she was pretty hesitant on this just because she was afraid how much it would hinder her because she was very needed. But she actually said this, this was not hindrance at all. So that was good. Um, she was fully compliant with HEP that I gave her as, as far as um, frequency and um, just actually looking at it as she's doing it to create that hand and brain connection that we want, the neuroplasticity. Um, and then after two weeks of being in this cast, she was actually scheduled to see her doctor again. And so unfortunately I had to remove the cast um, per his request because they, they don't want the cast on when they see her back. Um, so he, he, he asked me nicely at least to take it off. So, but just after two weeks of her being in the cast, you can tell the dramatic change in her IP motion or hook fist motion um, with just two weeks of wear time, she actually gained a lot more IP motion, just detailed here, her index finger through her small finger, over 20 degrees in, in every joint of the PIP and DIP of each finger. So that's actually very good in just a short amount of time, I think. And here's a video of her making the hook fist after just two weeks. Um, so unfortunately, I had to stop uh, this case because um, during this time, the hand surgeon I was working with, he was experiencing a lot of uh, spontaneous ruptures to the EPL after, after the distal radius fractures he was operating on, and she was actually one of them. Um, she actually said that she grabbed her covers in the middle of the night and felt something kind of pop in her wrist. Um, and this happened during the weekend. So the very next week, that Monday, I saw her and kind of knew exactly what happened. And then she immediately went to the surgeon who scheduled her for a, uh, a tendon transfer. So unfortunately I had to stop this, but you can tell just the, the amount of gains that she got in just two weeks. I'm a huge fan of this technique. Um, I can't wait to apply it to more patients because I, I know that this is the best thing for them if they're on board. And I know sometimes it's difficult to get them on board, but if you can, if you can persuade them somehow, I know this will definitely be the best most pain painless method as far as therapy goes because I'm, I'm a therapist that do not that does not like to put patients through pain during the treatment session <clears throat> and so um i really thank robin for her time and effort in showing me this technique and creating this course i think it's the the best course i've ever taken since i've been practicing thank you for your time